Hello everyone, I'm uh, Dr. Priyanka Singh. I'm a retina consultant at uh, Shekhar Rai Hospital. So uh, today we will be discussing about uh, vitreous hemorrhage. So basically, what is vitreous hemorrhage? Uh, vitreous, uh, we need to understand about uh, vitreous. It is a clear jelly which fills almost four-fifths uh, of the eye. And uh, because it is clear, we can see through it and hence we see clearly. If there is any bleeding that happens inside this jelly, then the clarity is lost. So this kind of bleeding co is called as vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, there can be multiple causes of uh, vitreous hemorrhage and uh, uh, most commonly it presents in older age group. Although it can happen in youngsters, uh, there are different uh, causes in youngsters and different causes in elderly. So let's come to the uh, most common causes. Uh, most commonly the vitreous hemorrhage is seen due to proliferative vascular retinopathies. Uh, which includes uh, diabetic retinopathy. So what happens in uh, diabetics because of uh, poor blood supply to retina, which is, which is called as uh, ischemia, uh, there is uh, production of chemicals which leads to formation of abnormal blood vessels. And these abnormal blood vessels are very fragile, so they tend to burst and uh, cause bleeding inside the vitreous, which is the clear jelly causing this vitreous hemorrhage. The other causes can be due to occlusion of uh, some blood vessels. So again, the same mechanism happens. There is ischemia, that is uh, loss of uh, blood supply. And uh, in order to counter this, the retina starts developing chemicals, which leads to formation of blood vessels. But those blood vessels again are abnormal and they are fragile. They again burst and uh, cause this bleeding inside the gel. The other causes can be breakthrough hemorrhages due to age-related uh, macular degeneration or entities like uh, CNVM, PCV, in which there is bleeding which happens under the retina and over time it tends to burst open and uh, release in the gel. So these can again cause uh, vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, the lesser common causes are uh, like sickle cell retinopathy, retinopathy of uh, prematurity and uh, yeast disease etc. which are less common. And, uh, but still we see quite a few cases of those also. Uh, coming to another set of causes which is ocular trauma. So uh, these patients can be of any age group. So generally the vitreous hemorrhage which we see in youngsters is post-trauma. So injuries like a blunt trauma can cause a sudden stretching and uh, uh, bursting of the blood vessels. It can lead to choroidal rupture which can again be followed by vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, or in cases of trauma due to some penetrating injury, it can uh, go through the retina and uh, cause uh, damage to the blood vessels, hence uh, bleeding inside the eye. You know, so there are multiple mechanisms following trauma which can cause uh, vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, the other uh, causes are like uh, following brain uh, injury, like uh, there can be some subarachnoid hemorrhage and the patient presents with uh, bilateral uh, bleeding inside the eye. So, all these are uh, slightly lesser uh, common causes. So, how will a patient present? Generally, uh, the patient is elderly, diabetic or has a relevant history. Uh, so, they will come with uh, complaints of uh, floaters. And uh, this kind of, uh, the floaters can range anywhere between few floaters to like cobwebs. Another common cause uh, which I would like to uh, bring to the notice is uh, posterior vitreous detachment. So what happens, this jelly inside the eye is adherent to the retina at multiple places. And with age or following trauma, uh, at times the jelly tends to separate and uh, during the separation it can tear a part of retina. And if it happens to lie on a blood vessel, it uh, causes avulsion and bleeding from that blood vessel. So a retinal tear with PVD can cause a vitreous hemorrhage. And uh, retinal detachment can also be associated with vitreous hemorrhage. So these two things uh, are also which we need to look in a patient of uh, vitreous hemorrhage. So such patients will complain of uh, floaters or um, 
a loss of vision depending on the amount of bleeding which is there inside the eye so uh, after uh, once a patient comes to us with such symptoms of floaters or uh, loss of vision which can be mild to severe almost a hand movement uh, vision patients if the vitreous hemorrhage is dense once a patient comes we need to go through step by step so uh, starting from history what would have uh, led to this is there a history of trauma is there a systemic illness which we need to look at is there any bleeding disorder bleeding diathesis which would have caused this so after a step by step approach depending on how much of view of the retina we have we need to uh, put the patient through few tests so if we have a good view we can go ahead with scans and uh, if we don't have a view then uh, ultrasonography of the uh, globe becomes very very vital to uh, help us come to a diagnosis and also find out if there is any underlying retinal detachment along with the vitreous hemorrhage uh, so uh, after multiple uh, tests we finally have a fair idea of what the underlying cause would be so once we have a case like this Uh, depending on the underlying cause we have to treat it so if there is a case of retinal detachment with vitreous hemorrhage we have to go ahead with surgery if there is a case of say diabetic retinopathy which has led to vitreous hemorrhage and there is very poor view of the retina then we need to observe the patient so the whole uh, process is to wait for the blood to try to clear on its own so what happens once there is bleeding inside the eye the blood tends to clot first and then slowly the clot starts getting lysed on its own after getting lysed the nature of the blood which was red earlier and the consistency was thicker it slowly becomes thinner and the color changes from orange to yellowish and ochre yellow so we tend to wait for some time and see for clearance of blood on its own if it doesn't clear then the patient might require surgery if the blood is clearing and we have a good view of retina then the when then we can start uh, laser photocoagulation for the patient and uh, we have one more option of uh, giving injections inside the eye called anti vegf injections to clear the blood faster this can be done for diabetics and patients with other vascular retinopathies provided we have ruled out any traction detachment so uh, these are the treatments which can be offered there is another subset of patient who have got only a subhyaloid hemorrhage which is seen generally in uh, valsalva retinopathy such patients will require a small laser and uh, then we can wait for the hemorrhage to slowly clear on its own uh, so depending on the cause we need to treat but uh, the fact that uh, uh, you know the vitreous hemorrhage patients if it is unilateral it can be missed because the patient is seeing very well from the other eye so they tend to come very late to us and uh, once we diagnose we need to uh, take proper steps to treat them if a patient of uh, posterior vitreous detachment comes with little floaters with some bleeding and we find a tear we have to immediately laser the tear to prevent chances of retinal detachment uh, there are multiple causes and um, there are different uh, myriad of symptoms which the patient can present with and uh, we have a uh, treatment for almost uh, all the problems thank you for your patient listening